Welcome to the Cabrera Lab podcast. Hey. What is up? How are you? I'm great. This is a very exciting, tiny little thing we're going to talk about. A tiny thing, like a quantum thing? Not that tiny. <laughs> no, it's not that tiny. <laughs> we are going to tell people the five W's and an H, the how, Woof. the w- of systems thinking. <laughs> okay. Who, what, where, why, where, one, why. How. how. All right, okay. so let's start with who. Who should be thinking about systems thinking? Who should be learning systems thinking? Eight billion thinkers. So everybody. Yeah, because, I mean, it, I, I don't say that um, without sort of scientific evidence. We live in systems. You live in systems. You live inside of systems. You're part of systems. You are a system. Your family's a system. Everything you've ever cared about is a system. So thinking in ways that are in alignment with systems is something everybody needs to do. Okay, so a kindergartner, a high schooler, the CEO of a company, a mom. A president, a a scientist. President. An engineer. you name it. Everybody. Yeah, I mean, it's like it's like saying, you know, breathing is important. I mean, you you live every single day in systems. Every single thing you care about is a system. Everything you care about has complexity to it that that your understanding of that complexity is going to help you interact with that thing that you care about better. All right. So that's the who. Yeah. Really- everybody. Everybody's eight who? billion systems thinkers. Eight billion. Plus. That's our vision. Yeah, it's like eight billion. Eight it's point constantly, one. Yeah. Eight point two. We started, by the way. I know. Our vision was seven billion systems thinkers. I remember. We're still working on it. Yeah. We believe. All right. Here's the what. What is systems thinking in a nutshell? Systems thinking is very, it's very, it's very simple, um, much simpler than a lot of people make it. It's actually the secret is in the name Mm -hmm. systems plus thinking. Mm -hmm. So systems thinking is you have the real world, you know, there's like a world, Mm -hmm. right? That's whatever slice of the real, real world that you're dealing with your family, your job, you know, some problem, whatever. Yep. And you have your brain, which is like an unfolded thing, (laughs) right? Yeah. Which is connected to your body because you're embodied and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. And what you want to do is get these two things in alignment. Mm -hmm. These, this is the systems and this is the thinking. Right. And so when you said in the previous answer, everyone, because we're all dealing with systems, what you mean is all of us are interacting with real world systems yeah. and how we think about them, the degree yeah. to which they're aligned yeah. is the what system thinking is, the degree to which you're actually thinking yeah. in that. And way. these systems are organized in a particular way. And you're, the way you think is organized in a particular way. And what we want to do is kind of match those up. And the other little caveat is there's there's a bunch of the ways you think all of us think which we generally call bias Mm -hmm. and so trying to get that bias out of it so that you can see this stuff more clearly Mm -hmm. and think in ways that are simpatico or aligned with these natural real world systems is the crux of uh, all things Good. All right. So we've done the who and the yeah. what. Now we're going to do the why, which I think is a nice, f- keeps going from here. Like, why should we be <clears throat> thinking systemically? Why should we be learning systems thinking? Because your ability to adapt to whatever system or situation that you're in is your ability to survive mm-hmm. and thrive in that situation or system yeah and so um the why is really you know for lack of a better word the why is success 
you know, effectiveness, happiness. You know, there's there's whatever situation you're in, and there's you, and you're going to navigate that situation, and the degree to which you successfully navigate through that situation is the degree to which you're thinking systemically. Right, because everything you're dealing with is a system in itself. Yeah. Right. And whether that situation is, you know, a job where you're trying to move up and, you know, do cool things or whatever, make more money, or whether that situation is a marriage, mm-hmm. or whether that situation is navigating your family and your kids and the struggles that they're going through, or whatever that situation is, it's sort of a, it's sort of a, systems thinking is agnostic to the situation mm-hmm. because what it's getting at is all these all these real world systems are structured in a particular way um, that's very adaptive but s- similar patterns yeah and if you know those patterns then you can understand those situations better yeah i mean another way that i like to think about it is when the way you're thinking about the real world is aligning with how things are actually presenting themselves yeah. you're going to get the outcomes that you're hoping for <clears throat> The decisions you make are going to work out. The outcomes that you're seeking are going to be more likely to happen and manifest. Hundo P. We got a hundo P. Nice. All right. All right. So you did who, what, why, where? Everywhere. So we've coined the word professional. Professional. Yeah. So in professional it's situations, personal situations. Yeah. I mean, I think a lot of us, a lot of us are. You know, in the world, it's all about, like, your professional this and professional that. But the truth is, you know, if when people are being honest, what they care about the most is their personal. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Their let's friends, get- their family, their loved ones, yeah. their, you know, their sense of self. It Systems thinking is deeply important to those domains as well as figuring out how to reconcile silos in your organization, being a better leader, you know, trying to figure out process problems in your organization. Um, you know, it, it is, again, if you're living in reality, you're living in systems. Right. So it doesn't, you know, life and systems thinking don't necessarily distinguish between personal and professional. So no. the where is everywhere. Yeah. So let's let's. Um, I, I would imagine a lot of people are listening to it. They can think of systems thinking in a professional sense. Yeah. They in a context they think of it as you know an a- academic field. So let's give an example of a personal context where systems thinking is equally useful. Your emotions. Yeah. You know, emotional intelligence is the regulation of, a, of different mo- emotions in certain situations. Mm-hmm. Um, you know when you interact with something that's upsetting well where's where's that uh, upsetting happening it's happening in the interaction between the thing the 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 source Mm -hmm. right the trigger and you and your perception your thinking um and to to a large extent probably your past some something that was a trigger in the past or something like that your ability to quickly navigate that you know system especially when that system is being overwhelmed by emotion yeah is critical to your survival or your thriving yeah and and being able to make the best decisions and the and the best courses of action yeah you know so an an emotional an, an emotion itself is a system but so is the wider context of where the emotion is happening right right Mm -hmm. and even even emotion doesn't come in very clear packages right you you could be you know sad and happy you know Mm -hmm. this week is uh, graduation week that's kind of a you know it's a sad happy time don't cry because it's over you know smile because it happened kind of thing right so you can have systems of emotion that are made up of many different emotions and sometimes you don't even know what you're feeling and figuring out what you're feeling is a critical aspect of success in life yeah and And i I mean success broadly speaking not just financial success yes i mean i think about it a lot when i hear people say oh 
I just flew off the handle or yeah. I, I lost my, my cool. And I think a lot of that is I've made an assumption or a connection, you know, from A to B, and I didn't take the time to stop. Yeah. And think about, well, there's probably a lot more a lot more at play here. You know, if I'm feeling a certain way about myself, it's because I have a mental model about something. Yes. So I have to go and interrogate that mental model and think about Completely. it to, to get my thinking more in alignment with the reality of things, <clears throat> right? And we do that a lot to ourselves. We beat ourselves yeah, up. Yeah, it, 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 I mean, think about, it, you know, the classic example is that you, you get an email that's upsetting and you immediately write back an email. The systems thinking is saying, wait a minute, what am I, wh wh how much am I loading onto this thing? Yeah. And let's slow down. Let's sleep on it. You know, let's, let's understand what's happening here. How much of it is my baggage? That kind of thing. Because, you know, as an example, if somebody says, hey, Laura, you're, you're a, you're a pterodactyl. You don't go, oh, you know, you, that's terrible. You call me a bad name or, you know, whatever. You, because, because there's no part of you that is affected by or believes that you're a pterodactyl. Except when I type. <laughs> yeah, except that's a, a, a T Rex, yeah. Oh, no, that's T Rex. Yeah, T Rex. Wait, pterodactyls are pterodactyls are the fly ones. No, I'm not a pterodactyl. Right? So. So think about that. When when somebody says something or something happens that makes you upset mm -hmm. or take offense, there's a small part of you, the reason that it's upsetting oftentimes is because there's a part of you that believes it. Mm -hmm. Because if it was something as silly as you're a pterodactyl or you remind me of a pterodactyl or whatever, then you're going to be like, well, right. you know, because, it doesn't yeah. mean anything. It's, a, it's sort of like that doesn't do anything for me or yes. to me, right? Yes. This episode is sponsored by Training Camp, the ultimate online spot for building the mental fitness that drives personal and professional change and success. At Training Camp, you'll have access to the science and practice of thinking with personalized thinking assessments, tiered training, and best of all, practice that improves skill. Go to CabreraLab.org to learn more. And now, back to the episode. All right, so that's who, what, why, when, where. Mm -hmm. No, we haven't done when. I did them out of order. We did who, what, why. Where. Where. Now we need to do when. And then we're going to talk about how. And then we're going to wrap this up. So when. I think we kind of answered that with the where. Yeah, I mean, again, it, not to be repetitive and not to, not to be kind of... Um, cavalier about it but w when is all the time yeah but i mean that again not being cavalier like it, it literally is all the time because you're dealing with systems you're dealing with complexity all the time yeah and and so the when of systems thinking is all the time yeah i mean i think i think about for example i'm making dinner yeah. Well, I'm I'm systems thinking about the relationship between the parts of a recipe and the timing of it all, and that's systems thinking, right? Yeah. I think about a new project or initiative. Well, it's the same thing. I'm thinking about the parts of it, how they're related. So the when is really whenever you're thinking something through. Yeah. And you know you need to build a mental model about it and also adapt to external situations. So I think when is. <clears throat> and I, I would say. Also, there's an aspect of this that's almost deeply uh, comforting that, that, that it's when all the time. There's an old saying, which is wash the glass like a baby Buddha. So in something as mundane as washing a glass, which, you know, doing dishes, most people don't enjoy doing dishes. Mm -hmm. But if you, can, if you can be in the present moment, so much so that even something as mundane as washing a glass, mm -hmm. you take as seriously as if you were washing the baby Buddha, mm -hmm. you know, so a, a baby that's like a, yeah. a Buddha. There's something about systems thinking, like you said, when you're cooking and you're like, you're totally in flow and you're, you're trying to make it so not, you know, you're trying to make like I make eggs in the morning or something like that for the kids. Mm -hmm. And you've got five different, egg dishes going on yep. and you're trying to he, he do also do you know you like yogurt and you're also trying to do you know coffee and 
and you're trying to get all of them warm and none of them burnt and you know you're all doing some omelets time. all at the same yeah. time and you kind of lock into that flow and that's systems thinking understanding all the different variables at play yeah so that you can not only serve breakfast on time and and you know quality and all that kind of stuff but also enjoy it yeah. you know cuz you're kind of locked into like this is this is occupying me yeah. in a in a very engaged way right this isn't like something that i'm doing and not paying attention this is something i'm fully yeah, engrossed focused. in yep um and it, it there's a there's a certain awesomeness to that yeah i think that's right i think that's right okay so the last thing <clears throat> that we should talk about briefly because you know people are going to have a lot of opportunity to go more in depth is how how do we become systems thinkers what are the simple things we need to do or practice to become systems thinkers well that that's actually probably the most difficult question of all of them mm -hmm. and the nice thing is it was difficult 30 years ago but it's not difficult today and the the vast majority of the last 30 years we we have spent researching that question the how mm -hmm. and i'm i'm very excited to say that that we we now know the answer empirically to that question and it's something that everybody can do which is awesome i mean like yeah. i i can't tell you i mean i can't tell you you know as as well as i do that you know 12 years ago, 15 years ago, 30 years ago, we didn't exactly know yet. Yeah. So the the how is it's actually quite simple. There's a few big ideas that are really important. Mm -hmm. The first step is to get your baseline so just like if you went to the gym and you wanted to know like I want to get fit and like where am I at today? Yep. Right? So that the TQ is a validated measure for getting your baseline. It's also something you can take over and over again to see if your baseline is improving. Right. <clears throat> the second thing we would suggest is there are six very easy to learn moves. Yep. And I would practice those moves. They're, they're, we, they all have funny names. Is, is, not list, zoom in, zoom out, uh, part party, RDS, and P-Circle. Those yep. are the six moves. Mm -hmm. Learn those. You can learn them in a minute, and you can practice them for a lifetime right. because they're so powerful. You can learn them and use them in a minute, and you can start getting success with them in, in just a minute yeah. or two. But you can get really, really good at them, and they're very powerful. The next thing is you you want to learn the, what we call the love reality loop, which is actually just this loop that I just drew which is you know, turning this into a loop where you check your mental models against reality. Yes, that's right. And then the next thing, which, which we talk a lot about in Blue Belt, is going underneath the moves and understanding what we call DSRP483, yep. which is the underlying theory to, to all of systems thinking. Yes, and in that course, there's an in-depth section of that, which is the four patterns, eight elements, three dynamics. The four patterns, DSRP, the eight elements that are each part of those, and the three dynamics that are super important. And frankly, those are the things people in Blue Belt get real excited about. When they learn those dynamics, they, they have a transformative effect yeah. on people, yeah. and uh, their life is never the same. They don't see things the they same. They don't see things the same ever again. Well, so there's the answer. So you start with um, you start with all of you know you start with your TQ. Mm -hmm. You learn the moves. You can get a lot out of the moves in and of themselves. Yeah, get just started the moves with that. alone are so powerful. And then as you move forward through uh, the coursework, then you get into the underlying theory elements and all of that. So yep. that's the how. All right. So that is the five W's of systems thinking. Yep, and that is a wrap. Mm -hmm.